Hey guys and welcome to this channel all about Amazon PPC. Today we are going to have a look at the new Amazon Product Opportunity Explorer. You may have heard about it. It is going to be an awesome tool that will come out and be available to everybody in 2022. It is already available if you have requested it and I'll show you how at the end of this video. But for now we're just going to have a walkthrough of all the important features from an advertiser's perspective or a seller perspective and less so from a product research perspective. So I'm just going to show you what are the things that I really love about it and what are the things I'm going to make use of from an Amazon advertising perspective. So this is how it looks like right via the growth menu and then product opportunity explorer. You will see this view once you've entered a search term in my case i have entered doghouse and amazon will give you all the niches or all the customer needs that it deems relevant or related to that search term so there you go you can already see some of them are not very you know relevant probably and probably not the thing that i'm selling so one thing i can recommend is using the browse and filter not just important for your product research, but also as a seller, when you actually want to find the need or the niche that is relevant to you. And in my case, at the time of recording this, I actually cannot scroll down. So that seems to be some kind of bug. However, you can use the command or control F function to then narrow it down to the category that you are actually in. Let's say pets. And wait, it's not finding it apparently. I know it is there. Okay, pet. And then search for it. And here we are, pet supplies. Let's go to dogs. And then let's just search for house. Here it is, crates, house, and pets. Let's select that. And we're gonna narrow those needs and niches down to the actual needs that are probably relevant to us, right? Maybe we are selling a dog crate or a dog tent. Um, and we just want to have a look at the search terms in that need that are actually, you know, the most powerful ones to go after or the most attractive ones. So that is, you know, the first big feature that I like this filter really make use of that. And there you already see which of these needs is actually the highest in terms of search volume, the highest in, ter in terms of growth year over year or quarter over quarter. So that is very nice to see. For example, the dog heater products are of course now going into Q4 and Q3 behind us. Um, yeah, growing a lot. This is actually also something we'll see later on in the search terms for those dog houses. So let's just click into one of those needs where at the top you will see that general information. This is all in terms of data for the next uh, for the past 90 days. And you'll also see how many products actually led to 80% of all the clicks in that niche, which means the search terms that they connect to that niche. So always, always, you know, keep that in mind. When they talk about all these KPIs, it's always related only to the search terms that they connect to that niche, right? So anyway, in this case, it's 71 pr products. I don't quite know yet. I don't have a feeling for it yet. If that is a lot or not, probably it's going to be a similar amount because this actually kind of confirms that what we all know that people just don't go past, you know, the first free pages. So this is more or less the first free pages, depending on how many products are listed on each page. And yeah, in this case, 71%, uh, 71 products are getting 80% of all the clicks for all of those search terms that we'll see later on. So yeah, this is the first tab, the products tab. And of course, 
this is very interesting in terms of product targeting, right? You already see which product has the most clicks. This is pretty much a given. You want to be taking that ASIN and you want to be putting it into a product targeting campaign, probably even a single target campaign. So, you know, where you're only targeting that ASIN that is really getting most of the clicks, especially of course, if you feel like you have a better product, right? You might be cheaper, you might have a better rating. And um, yeah, in that case, especially go ahead and target that top product, that top clicked on product. Yeah, so, you know, go through the list. Probably I would actually just take all of them and put them into a product targeting campaigns. But like I said, especially the top clicked on ones and especially the ones where you are actually stronger or at least cheaper, um, especially those you want to put into single ASIN target campaigns and really, you know, target them in all the ad types, of course, sponsored product, sponsored display, sponsored brand and sponsored video ads. That is the awesome thing about product targeting, the only uh, placement where you can actually use all ad types and, you know, really make yourself present on that product that is apparently getting a whole lot of clicks in your niche. Then we have the second tab, and this is, of course, probably the most interesting for marketeers, for advertisers, for sellers, the search terms tab, where you then really, for the first time, see real search volume data in the past 90 days, not estimates from the softwares out there, but real numbers, right? So this is hugely exciting. And yeah, you of course see, you know, the most generic search terms, getting the most search volume, and then very interestingly, the search conversion rate. This is something we've never seen before. Um, so yeah, very interesting to look at as expected for those very generic search terms here, dog house and dog houses. The search conversion rate is not very high, right? So, you know, if this was a long tail keyword and it was not very high, you could actually, let's go back to the product research mentality quickly, think, yeah, okay, that might be a niche where I want to go in and you know fulfill that customer need a lot better so people actually find what they're looking for but in this case it's just it's just a more top of funnel search term it's a generic keyword where you know people are just not yet completely in that buying phase they're more doing research and for those keywords probably you know i wouldn't in general go after them strongly you know you don't have to have the highest bid you don't need to be top of search in many cases so because people like i said people are not yet in that buying mentality they maybe don't even know yet what they want exactly however if you do see this kind of long tail keyword right and you see it has a, a relatively low search conversion rate then then definitely go after that. And, you know, even if the conversion rate is not too low, if you see this is relevant for your product, it has a high search volume, then of course, this should very much be a keyword that you should be focusing on, that you should have as a single target campaign where you didn't have, you know, complete control over the budget of that keyword, complete control over the placement settings you see exactly how well top of search performs for that individual keyword. And then you can react and set the placement multiplier accordingly. So this is of course, hugely valuable to see. And as I mentioned before, in regards to the dog heaters niche that um, really had a very high search volume growth here, you can also see it again with these insulated dog house uh, keywords where you see again quite a growth quarter over quarter 214% as expected as well as the heated doghouse 618% and in this case actually the conversion rate is indeed not too high so you know that could very well be something you should go after if in some way you have that kind of product right and yeah, what else? Just to mention quickly, search conversion rate is the number of purchases of products within that niche 
from searches that came. Uh, so people that entered one of these search terms, right? And it's not actually clicks on that product. So it's, it's bound to be obviously lower than the normal click conversion rate that we generally speak of when we talk about conversion rate, that just as a side information. Right then, so you finally have the search volumes of all of those search terms. You can finally you know, see what's actually growing by sorting by growth or what's actually decreasing perhaps, just to expect you know, perhaps a little bit of a sales dip somewhere going into the next season. So yeah, this is definitely very interesting indeed. And of course, again, we have the top three clicked products. This again, very interesting to look at for your product targeting ads, right? Go for the search terms that are the most relevant to you, pick those ASINs and put them into your product targeting campaigns. I talk about product ASIN campaigns in this video in more detail because it is such a huge topic and still a little bit underused. So go ahead and check that out if you want as well. But yeah, this is uh, certainly a great tab and I think this will be, you know, the standard really of analyzing keywords and, you know, prioritizing keywords in the future. Also in terms of Amazon SEO, of course, what are you going to put into your title and your bullet points, etc. This is really gold, folks. So yeah, let's just have a quick look at the last tab. This again, mostly relevant for product research. However, it is also important if you have a huge product portfolio, perhaps you're an agency taking over a new brand and let's say they have 200 products or more. And of course you need to you know, prioritize, you need to focus your work and you need to decide where you're gonna start in the next one or two months, which products you really wanna push in the next you know, quarter. And here you have some great starting points if you figure this out for all of your products and you know, you know, in this niche, 71% of the products are using sponsored product ads or in this niche, 54% of the products are prime, right? What else do we have here? The number of brands, again, I'm not sure if that's high or low yet, don't really have a feeling for that yet. But nonetheless, if you, you know, write that out for all of those products in your portfolio and then you have that feeling, for it. So another factor to consider when you're prioritizing your products. Then you have the average number of reviews, obviously a big factor and the review rating. And also very interestingly, and I believe the first time we're seeing this data is the average out of stock rate in the niche. So of course you want that to be as high as possible. And that means more opportunity for you to fill that blank space, right? And then finally, also the product listing quality score that they give, very interesting as well. So if you write down, you know, in a sheet, all of those numbers for all of your products, then it will make it immensely easier to actually prioritize and then decide where you want to go after and where, you know, the competition is the smallest. Yeah, and that is it. I don't want to extend it too much. Again, you can you know get so much out of this, especially for your product research as well, of course. But I hope I was able to show you that also for advertisers and sellers, you know, and marketeers in general, this will be huge. This is already huge. And just to show you now how you can actually get access, you just have to write an email to the Amazon contact that I'm giving you right now. This is the email that you have to contact and then you let them know your seller ID. Now, how do you get the seller ID? Let me just show that to you. Basically, you just go to your product on Amazon. Let's say, <clears throat> let's say it's this one. Then you go to sold by and in this case, it's giant ticks. And then you'll see it 
in the seller equals, right? And the thing that comes after that until the and sign is the seller ID. And there you go, that's it. You know, just let them know, please let me have access to the product opportunity explorer. This is my seller ID, thank you, and that's it, right? And you will get access maybe after a month. It took me, I think, about three weeks. So there you go. But maybe, you know, by the time you're seeing this, everybody will have access anyway via the growth section as I showed. And also, oh yeah, I forgot to mention this. This is the help section where you can find explanations of all of those terms that they give you. I'm also gonna leave that in the comments and the description section. So be sure to check that out. This is also very interesting and certainly good to know to really understand what you're actually looking at. All right, and that is it for this one. I hope it was useful as ever. If it was, I would of course appreciate a thumbs up as usual. And if you wanna see more of this kind of stuff, then you know what to do, right? I'll hopefully see you around in the future. Actually, I can already mention it. One of the next exciting videos from my end will be an Amazon SEO tool overview where I compare all the third party softwares, what they do, which features they have. You might've seen this from me on other topics such as Amazon Profit and Amazon Advertising. So now Amazon SEO will be the next one and we're gonna have a look at what is really the tool that gives us the most in terms of you know content optimization, ranking visibility, keyword research and all these things, which is of course just as important as Amazon advertising is. So there you go. That's something to look forward to on this channel. So you know what to do if you want to see that. And I'll hopefully see you around for the next one. Either way, have a great rest of the Q4 and rest of 2022, depending on when you're seeing this. And yeah, until then, bye-bye.